Hello there Sagittarius, welcome to your reading for this week. Um, um, I have a few messages that came out while I was shuffling the cards, so I'm going to relay those messages first. There are two of them, and then we're going to go into your reading. Um, first of all, they, they say like a zero-sum game, okay? A zero-sum game. And, um, you know, what I feel is, even when you're upset with somebody, even when you feel like this situation is not fair, this person is taking all of my money or all of my things. This person is getting, you know, this person is lazy. They don't do the work that's required of them in, or expected of them. And yet they still get promoted. Or this person is, you know, taking all of my money. Even if you dislike somebody for, and it takes a lot for you to say, I don't like that person because you do tolerate a lot. You are also um, very tolerant, I feel, of other people's quirks their deficits you see it but you know you're you're tolerant and and it takes a lot for you to say like you absolutely hate somebody because you you don't have hate for a lot of people and so i i feel like what happens is you have somebody that's that's uh that you feel is not getting their their due justice okay and um even if they exhibit really shady, bad behaviors, a big part of you still feels bad when misfortune falls upon them. It's because you have a really good heart and your understanding of human nature. And I feel like the last six signs of the Zodiac, you guys um, have like a higher understanding overall of people and their, their quirks. And, you know, you're forgiving. You're a lot more forgiving. And you can see better outside of your perspective and you can understand that okay that person is probably like that because they've dealt with people who are like that and so you never really get mad at anybody you still at the end of the day pray for their well-being right and um so the 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 zero-sum game basically means i feel like someone is taking from you or you feel like someone is taking from you and you're just like this is not fair and um, I, I, I don't feel like you're standing up for yourself, which is odd, right? Because you guys are, are not conflict avoidant, but I feel like there is a situation here. It has been going on for quite some time. You need to stand your ground. You need to stand your ground and you need to, you know, defend what's yours. You need to reclaim what's yours. And um, the second message that I feel here is once again you know you're being really hard on yourself but i feel like it's it's coming out in a different way for those of you who have children you have sacrificed a lot a lot for your children um you made sure that you know they're always fed you make sure that they have the nicest um toys or the nicest gadgets phones notebooks cars etc so that they uh, their friends don't make fun of them or so that they can fit in with their peers. You know, you care about these things. You're actually very considerate when it comes to, okay, these kids, you know, uh, they don't need an iPhone, but I'm gonna get them an iPhone because um, that's what they want. Like, you've worked really, really hard to stack up your money to take care of the people that, that you love. And you take really good care of the people that you love, but then you don't really spend enough resources and to, to kind of pamper yourself the same way, okay? So there is a deep need here to nurture ourselves, to take care of ourselves, to splurge on ourselves a little bit, to be a little bit more selfish, to kind of take care of ourselves and in, emotionally nurture ourselves, make ourselves feel good about ourselves. So um, don't be too hard on yourself, but this is more about pampering yourself, okay? Being able to, you know, not just go to work and, and stack up your money, but to be able to enjoy your money and the uh, whatever it is that you have been longing to have, splurge on it. You know, be good to yourself. Um, okay, so we're going to go into your reading. What I feel, though, is um, this week, the energy in the love department across the board for all the signs, there has been a lot of clearing up old energy, old baggage. So I feel like the, the love reading portion is so lighthearted. It makes it so much easier for me to read. And I, I don't feel like a lot of people are really bogged down with emotional hangups 
with relationship issues, with things that um, emotionally destabilize them. So I feel like there's a lot of closure, a lot of finality coming through. People are very hopeful in general. And I also feel like, you know, we're heading towards the holiday season where people start to realize who and what is important to them. And it, it starts to, you know, um, the, the theme of family relationships come to the forefront. And so the theme of, you know, mending uh, fences, um, reaching out to family members. And, and family members, I feel family relationships and those love relationships tend to take precedence over love relationships, which are a little bit more tumultuous. So I feel like across the board with the 12 signs, the love sector is it's coming out really strong and a lot more stable and people are making better decisions. And I just feel there has been a lot of closure, clearing up old energies so that we can move forward. And that's what I also feel happening with you. This is the energy that you bring to the table. We have the Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is somebody that is also all about business, okay? This is a very attractive woman. So people see you as someone like this. You embody this energy. She is flirtatious. She is also, this is like a, uh, somebody who, you know, she can joke around with the men, she can joke around with the, the women, she can joke around with people who are older, she can joke around with like sailors and construction worker. So this is not so much like a, um, she has a potty mouth, but she has a sense of humor and she has wit about her where she can connect with people from all walks of life. She's popular, she's um, provocative. And, you know, she owns her space. And uh, I mentioned two weeks ago, I believe, about, you know, being flirtatious without seeming sleazy. And I feel like you're coming into this embodiment of this energy where you're doing it properly. You're flirting without being seeming desperate. So there, it's like a fine line, right? Knowing when to stop, knowing when to move forward and not pushing so far ahead when the other person's not ready. So this is definitely that uh, energy, more lighthearted, more nonchalant, but at the same time showing somebody that you're interested in them, but in a very, in a more detached manner. So this is someone who's very popular. You're seen as someone who's very, very easy to talk to, very popular. Everyone likes you. And generally, um, this is a very attractive woman. How the other person sees you, we have here the Empress, and the Empress is all about taking care of her business. This is somebody that cares about expansion, okay? Um, you're on this cloud, like being on cloud nine, and tending to your garden, tending to your life, looking at things from a higher vibration in a higher perspective, okay? Seeing the forest for the trees really looking at what do I need to work on what uh, and you're seeing so far into the future that you're anticipating certain outcomes so you're taking preventative measures to take care of things to get things done to fix things because you anticipate that they're gonna break down further down the line the Empress is beauty and love and just prosperity and so the person that you're dealing with they see you as a little bit of a threat mainly because you're very very stable you're very carefree. You're very just uh, leaps and bounds ahead of them. Okay, you're elevated. Your status is elevated. They also feel like you have, for some of you, come from a really good family. Um, it could be true or not. Whatever the, the situation is, they feel like you have really good upbringing. You speak properly. You have good manners. You have a good sense of grace about you. You're very well refined and this um, card is usually in the traditional Rider Waite deck. I'm not sure if the imagery shows up in this deck. But the Empress is ruled by Venus. And Venus rules all things that are Venusian, such as, you know, art, music. So you might have uh, talents in the art, artistic industry. You might have artistic talent. You might have um, the ability to sing, the ability to play multiple instruments. You might uh, dabble in the arts, graphic design. I'm seeing for some of you painting, sculpting, things like that. You have hobbies. You, you have cultivated these hobbies. So they see you as someone who is quite, you know, kind of out of their league is what I'm sensing. They're very attracted to you. 
and um, they see you as someone who is a little bit outside of their league mainly because they think you come from a really good family you have pretty manners you um you dress well you take care of yourself uh, you do things to really expand your mind and your consciousness you're a perpetual student and um, you know you, you just take good care of yourself and you have high standards for everybody and yourself um, not that you're just on the high horse you know uh, judging people no they, they feel like you have high standards for everybody and um, the way that your partner shows up we have here this is the page of wands okay this is somebody that wants to connect but the way that they connect is I want to show you something come with me I want to show you something so it's somebody that doesn't really know how to express themselves like hey I like you let's go on a date I feel like they they jump the gun a little bit and they also want to test the waters with you so it's somebody who's a little bit more on the playful end their energy is very lighthearted they want to communicate with you but their communication um, she's holding a letter so I feel like it's in written form emails text messages you know rather than calling they text a lot so if you're wondering why it's because this person they don't want to sit still for a conversation they want to you know uh, whenever they have some something strikes their fancy they want to text you they want to email you they want to message you so it's somebody that you're dealing with through a lot of ver uh, written communication rather than verbal communication um, this is the way it's playing out here you're busy doing your own thing and they catch your attention and so I see somebody, you know, coming around you, hovering around your space a lot. Um, you could be, you know, deep in thoughts of very immersed in your work. And they're like behind you trying to catch your attention. Okay. And um, they're, they're, it's like attention seeking. Attention seeking. I feel like you're dealing with someone who's very different from you too, culturally, ethnically. Um, the page energy, especially the suit of wands, usually indicates, you know, different values, different upbringing, different religious belief, different philosophies in life and different ideologies. You're, you're dealing with someone who's very different from you. And so that's what I'm, I'm getting here. And the way that you see this person, we have here the Ten of Pentacles. Some of you are playing coy because you see this person as someone who's very privileged. And that could mean, you know, they're, um, sometimes it could mean they come from a really good family. Everything in life happens for them in a very easy manner. So they don't really know what it feels like to really have to struggle to get your hands dirty, to roll in the trenches and to kind of, um, work their way up. So in a way you're, um, you're kind of impatient with them because of their wor their worldview is a little bit narrow-minded based on their privileged upbringing okay I don't want to offend anybody who might be cross-watching but I feel like the Sagittarius person has been through a lot and it's understandably so because Sagittarius had their Saturn return um, their Saturn transit so it's the Saturn return for some Sagittarius and it's the Saturn transit a few years ago and Saturn makes you older and wiser. Saturn brings lessons. And so the Sagittarius person has been through a lot. And because of that, they're not really... They understand more. And, and they're not really at a point where they want to continue playing games, okay? And so when, a Sag when somebody has gone through the Saturn transit, they're, they're almost like 10 years older. It ages you. It teaches you what's important and it teaches you what is good for you and what's bad for you and it teaches you to kind of uh, learn to kind of um, intuitively sense people and their motives so in a way it makes us a lot more skeptical after we have survived the Saturn transit we're no longer a child we're no longer idealistic we have to make decisions from an adult standpoint um, you like this person, I feel, but the relationship, it's like castle in the sky, okay, in the clouds. It's a very, very lofty 
idealistic dream that you might have had about this person. But in terms of building anything stable, you might not feel like they are emotionally mature enough for you. You might not feel like they have enough to offer you. Not materially, but you might not believe their intentions and what they're bringing to the table. So I feel like there has been this, you know, kind of reality sinking in that it's a pipe dream. I can't build on it anymore. And that's why you're kind of turning away. Like, I'll believe it when I see it. You want my attention? You've got my attention. But in terms of, you know, me standing up and walking towards you, I'm not going to do that. So I feel like they're trying to get your attention. They're trying to communicate with you. But the communication and everything that they are, they are saying, it's, it's very much a pipe dream and you are coming to the realization. Yes, it's disappointing, right? When it, the, the start of something has so much potential, but then once you're confronted with the reality and it just feels like this person is not what I want. I like them, you like them but it's just not what I need right now. And so I feel that element coming in here. For some of you, somebody is trying to build a future with you when they are not even financially stable. They're like, oh, let's do this, let's get a property, and they don't even have a job. It's like that ridiculous. And so you're not really, you know, you're not really budging. You're just like, okay, I hear what you're saying, I'll believe it when I see it, and then you turn back around and you mind your own business while this person still tries to communicate. Um, I feel though, for others of you, there is another person coming into the picture that might be um, very much in alignment with you, but I just don't feel like they might be in another relationship because the Ten of Pentacles is about family they might be trying to get out of that relationship and they're talking to you about it. But once again, you're not getting duped. You're not like excitedly telling them, oh yeah, when is that gonna happen? Let's uh, date in the meantime. No, you understand that things take time and you understand that divorce, separation, breakups, you, you, you know that it doesn't happen swiftly, okay? Based on everything that you've lived through, you understand that everything is a process. And so if they're telling you this now, it might not be, you know, until like two or three years down the line when they're finally ready. And by that time, you're not gonna put your life on hold because you've got things to do. You've got things to do. Other people to date, other people to meet even. So major maturation process happening here, Sagittarius. Um, in other areas of your life, well, actually, let me talk about this card. So what's happening between the two of you? We have here the Judgment card. And the Judgment card is sort of like the Day of Reckoning. I'll believe it when I see it. If I don't see anything physical or tangible, I don't believe it. It's just the reality of things like snapping out of that, you know, a sense of idealism and looking at a situation. Rather than just praying for things to happen, you want concrete evidence. You want something tangible and you want something real. They're going to keep trying to communicate with you. They're going to keep going. They're going to keep trying. They're going to just um, try to connect with you. But what is really standing in your way here is the Empress, which is, this is what I want. I want stability. I want a marriage. And we have here the Ten of Pentacles, which is also what they want. But until they can give you this, because, you know, you deserve this. You deserve this, this whole completion the Ten of Pentacles, because you are the Empress. So until they can get themselves to this level, you're not really going to buy whatever, you know, uh, story they're trying to sell you, okay? Um, other areas of your life. I mentioned before about, you know, um, a zero-sum game. You're dealing with this character here. This is a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio very manipulative very manipulative this is somebody that has been taking things from you um, he or she gives you a sob story and you open up your wallet you open up your purse and you you know give them money they give you a sob story and then you get out of your bed 
to help them or you get out of your office you get out of your car you get out of the uh, whatever you were doing uh, and then you help them over and over and over and over again because you're a fire sign and because it's easier if you just do it rather than you know deal with them constantly complaining about it okay so be careful about that that's how they manipulate you your sense of impatience sometimes it can be a double-edged sword turn on yourself okay um, so learn to kind of work with other people's energy learn your weaknesses and refine them so that they don't become a weakness if someone knows you're very very impatient they're gonna come at you and they want you to do something for them they're gonna come at you and they're just gonna talk your ears off and you get frustrated and you're like oh, fine I'll just do it I'll just help you with it I'll just do it for you don't do that don't do that don't feed into it uh, understand how you're being played or manipulated uh, manipulated excuse me and especially if you're dealing with this person um, some of you might have children with this person some of you might share assets with this person but for whatever reason there's an element here about somebody taking things away things being taken and it's not fair it's not fair it's not right it's not fair they know how to push your buttons and you know it's sort of like I'm gonna manipulate hold out my hands and they're gonna magically give me what I want so not cool okay um, this person they do this with everybody. They burn many bridges. They do this with everybody. And you know, they don't care. They don't care how they're being perceived. So if you look at this, this is like everyone is by it, taking the bait. This person doesn't care. At the end of the day, they're very self-absorbed, narcissistic. Um, they're going to do what they're going to do in order to survive. And I see a little bit of a social chameleon with this person. At first, they kind of blend in and become like just one of the villagers, right? And then later, they show their true colors. But they don't care what people think of them. Their reputation doesn't really mean anything. They're kind of, uh, they blend into their environment. They do whatever they do to survive. And I feel like you do, you know, like I mentioned before, you don't hate anybody even the worst people you still find that sense of that common thread of humanity running through you and them and you do still feel bad and so you you help and you reach out and um i feel like it's it's a weakness that they're exploiting so please be careful i don't see this person as a permanent fixture in your life he or she is not coming back every week which is good thank god but I feel like around, you know, major holiday season, around important milestones in your life, they keep coming back in. So um, make sure that you are not being manipulated by anybody, okay? Um, what I'm also feeling as well, we have here the magician. This is hosting, hosting a, a, a party, attending a party, attending a gathering, spending money very extravagantly. Um, I feel like somebody in your midst is doing this, okay? Spending like there's no tomorrow, when they really should be saving up. If this is you, if you have been splurging a lot on yourself, um, I feel like it's okay to a certain extent, but, you know, just don't go overboard. And you guys tend to do things, uh, you guys tend to, tend not to do things in moderation. So just be careful about that, okay? Excessive drinking and things like that too, just be careful. Um... We have here the eight of coins so this is indicating to me you know you work hard and you play hard and and when it's the energy is very reciprocal then I'm not too worried about it I feel like finances will be very good for this um, this week and as we head into from now into January I feel like it's gonna be very stable it's gonna be very good many of you might be getting bonuses speaking engagements might be booked for a conference, might be booked for some type of a seminar, might lead a focus group, might be in charge. Um, you're kind of like, this is like working on something so that you can present it to the world, okay? So that you're on, on stage uh, reciting whatever it is that you're preparing, such as a speech. So I feel like you're working on some major, major presentation. That's going to pan out for you guys very beautifully. And uh, rehearse it. Make sure that you have, you know, multiple rehearsals before you do the real thing. Just because 
we are heading into um, Mercury retrograde on the 17th of, uh, of November and it's going to continue I believe until like the first for the first six days or five days I can't remember of December so if you're giving a speech you know in December you want to make sure that you rehearse everything thoroughly okay I'm gonna leave it at that um, Sagittarius um, you know I actually want to pull out one more card for you guys in the love department because I'm kind of curious so let me just do that so who is can you show me the sign of the person that Sagittarius is dealing with just so you guys know who I'm talking about. Can you show me the sign? Okay, we have here the chariot, possibly Cancerian. Okay. Um, this is, I, I feel like, this is somebody that is um, a, very afraid of commitment. Okay. Uh, they blow hot and cold, and I feel like a lot of the times, you know, the way it's depicted in this card, you know, running away from something, running away from their feelings, running away from their emotions, when they feel things really, really, um, when they feel something very heavily, they, they kind of get scared and they run away. And it's really frustrating for Sagittarius people to deal with cancers. Cancers, one step forward, two steps back, and, you know, they go sideways. The crab on the beach, they go sideways. So I feel like it's just like, back and forth with this person so i hope that's helpful sagittarius i wish you all the best take care and have a wonderful holiday season um no actually halloween season excuse me i'll talk to you guys soon bye bye